Unfortunately, I do not think that Classically Abby is going to continue covering Little Nas X's songs anytime soon. He did something that wasn't at all very classic. The racy song and video has some members of the conservative Christian community up in arms. Social media exploding with people reacting over what the song could mean for our souls. Okay, so for the 11% of you guys who do not know what happened, Little Nas X released a music video and a song. It's called Montero, Call Me By Your Name. And it starts off, he's in the Garden of Eden, then he's seduced by a snake. He gets stoned to death with butt plugs. He's on his way to heaven, but then he pole dances his way down to hell. And then when he gets to hell, he gives Satan a lap dance and then he kills Satan, and then he becomes the new Satan, the new ruler of hell. I quite enjoyed it. I was pretty entertained by it. And about 50% of you guys said that you also loved it. And it looks like I have some big spenders in my audience. You guys were able to buy $1,000 pair of shoes. My goodness. And only just a few of you guys were angered and offended by that, which, you know, I was expecting that number to be pretty small for my audience. But uh, you know who was angered and offended by this music video and these shoes? The governor of South Dakota. The only reason you know who I am today is because the liberals have been busy kicking me in the head for all the decisions I've made for my people in South Dakota. But let me tell you, my people are happy. They're happy because they're free. You also said you never instituted a mask order, shut any churches or businesses, or even defined what an essential business is. As of today, the CDC says your state has the eighth highest death rate per capita in the U.S. That's a rate of deaths per 100,000 residents. Don't you think your decisions as an executive contributed? Okay, here's the thing about Christy Nome. Do you guys remember that video of that nurse from South Dakota where she was talking about how her patients are angry and upset and in denial that they have COVID and it's going to kill them? And their last dying words are, um, this can't be happening, it's not real. And when they should be spending time FaceTiming their families, they're filled with anger and hatred. And it just made me really sad the other night. And um, I just can't believe that those are going to be their last thoughts and words. And CNN played that clip of Chrissy Noem being like, oh, well, the liberals are coming after me, but at least my people are happy because my people are free. Meanwhile, your people were fucking dying from COVID and she didn't want to mandate masks, condone super spreader events. The state has taken a hands-off approach to public health protocols recommended by the CDC. Back in July, President Trump hosted an Independence Day celebration, as you can see on your screen. This was in a packed amphitheater at Mount Rushmore. A month later, nearly a half million bikers flooded into the town of Sturgis for an annual motorcycle rally. South Dakota's Republican governor, Kristi Noem, supported both events and refuses to issue public safety directives such as wearing masks. And God forbid you make somebody wear a piece of cloth over their face and follow very basic safety precautions that could mean the difference between life or death. But you're gonna get angry over some shoes. Governor Christy Nome tweeted, our kids are being told that this kind of product is not only okay, it's exclusive. Do you know what's more exclusive? Their God-given eternal soul. We are in a fight for the soul of our nation. We need to fight hard and we need to fight smart. We have to win. You care so much about freedom until it comes to some shoes. And then Lil Nas X replied with, you're a whole governor and you on here tweeting about some damn shoes. Do your job. Amen. Exactly. Little Nas X does not understand what's happening. That's why he's tweeting me, why he's saying, oh, I know I did something right if Candace Owens is upset. Little Nas X and Candace Owens are not even right now thinking in the same regard, right? He is thinking he can make money. He, just like Cardi B, like every other black American that is being used by these corporations, they don't understand what they are being used for. They don't understand that they, they are being used really to just initiate evil throughout American society and that black Americans are just the conduit. What did Candace Owens have to say? We turned George Floyd, a criminal drug addict, into an icon. 
Okay, anytime somebody gets brutalized by the police, there's always this counter narrative of, oh, well, that person wasn't an angel. They were no angel. You do not need to be an angel for your life to have value. We're not saying that George Floyd was perfect. We're saying that George Floyd's life mattered. That's the whole idea behind Black Lives Matter. It's that his life mattered. One does have to wonder what's the greater sin, counterfeit $20 bill or killing somebody on the street because I think that Candace is a little bit confused. We are promoting Satan shoes to wear on our feet. They're just shoes, Candace. I do like one of his follow-up tweets of like, damn, are you happy now? I'm sure that Candace would love those Chick-fil-A shoes instead. We've got Cardi B named as woman of the year. I don't fucking care. And we're convinced it's white supremacy that's keeping black America behind. Was it Lil Nas X who murdered George Floyd? Oh wait, but I guess his murder doesn't really matter because, you know, he was a criminal drug addict, so what the hell ever. How stupid can we be? We, you, not me, you are the one being stupid, Candace. This is just absolutely ridiculous. And then Lil Nas X is basically congratulating himself for pissing off Candace Owens. He has a few other tweets. I'm not gonna go over all the other tweets because I know that everybody else did. There is some funny shit here and I'm 100% convinced that this TikTok tweet. It tells the world that my grandson wants to hump This TikTok tweet. I'm such an old person. I'm such a millennial. I'm not Generation Z. But yeah, this TikTok has to be satire. I do not accept it as anything other than satire. I mean, weren't you the one that was saying racial slurs to the bag boy at the grocery store the other day? You know what killed me? That video of people not socially distancing during a pandemic, gathering in church in person to talk about some shoes. You're worried about shoes. You are worried about Satan shoes when there's a pandemic and you're not even socially distancing. Are they vaccinated? I don't know. But yeah, naturally it did bring me back because this is something that we worried about back when I used to attend church. It was like culture wars, all day, every day. Who cares about policies that are gonna protect people from dying a completely preventable death? Let's worry about the children. Let's worry about celebrities and their influence on the children. I do like that tweet saying that Cardi B and Lil Nas X are not gonna raise your children. You're gonna raise your children. Yeah, it's your job to do that. I think that if you're an adult, you should be able to make content for other adults. Even if you have in the past talked to children Children or interacted with children, that doesn't mean that all of your content after you talk to children needs to be for children. That's so ridiculous. There is that side of the controversy, but I am also old enough to remember that one time when the band that's formerly known as the Dixie Chicks, now known as the Chicks, were canceled because they criticized George Bush in the war in Iraq. Callow, foolish women who deserve to be slapped around. Absolutely. I think that this controversy would have been completely fine if they had been in any other genre, but they're in country music. And Lil Nas X's first breakout hit was a country music song. I'm not at all trying to make the argument that all or most country music fans are like puritanical or whatever. It's just that if you are that kind of person, if you're not interested in mainstream music, if you think that mainstream music is too vulgar, too sexual, too whatever, then country music might be the right genre for you, country or classical. But I do want to point out too, he didn't go straight from country to call me by your name. So I did find a lot of his tweets and clapbacks and all of that very funny, but I found these tweets very, they were very illuminating. I spent my entire teenage years hating myself because the shit y'all preach would happen to me because I was gay. So I hope you are mad, stay mad, Feel the same anger you teach us to have towards ourselves. Then he retweeted Baby Huevo. Lil Nas' music video literally portrayed the fact that he isn't bothered with the idea of going to hell if it means that he gets to accept who he is 
and his sexuality. I thought that that was very interesting. I have mentioned several times now that I did grow up very religious, grew up conservative Christian, and the fear of hell was real. I remember when I was four years old, I watched this play that my church put on about going to heaven or hell when you die, and it completely freaked me out. And that's the main thing that like motivated me to be like super overzealous. It was this fear that I could die any moment, and I didn't know where I would end up. And I always felt like I wasn't good enough. Even when on the outside, I was very preachy and whatever. I appeared to be very devout. I had so many doubt. I was so uncertain. I was so insecure. And I really thought that I wasn't good enough as I was. I was so terrified of the idea that I could go to hell. And I didn't want to consider any other point of view. I didn't want to consider the idea that maybe everything that I'd been taught was a lie. It was very scary, but then very liberating to think. I don't think that I have anything to be afraid of. In a press release, Lil Nas X suggested that the imagery in the music video was intended to address homophobia, saying he was harnessing his sexuality to seduce the devil and strip of his power as an evil force, while dismantling the throne of judgment and punishment that has kept many of us from embracing our true selves. You know, there's a lot of polarization between left and right, Christian versus atheist, Christian versus all the other religions. I I just wish that people would look at those tweets and think, okay, he's coming from a place of pain and the church possibly brought that pain about. The church alienated him in some way. If you are a devout follower of Christianity, I think that uh, being a judgmental asshole is not the way to go. Best way to approach this is with compassion, with love, and with humility. Humility is, I I think the most important thing to see like, okay, somebody dropped the ball here. Maybe a lot of people dropped the ball here. What can we do in the future to let people like Lil Nas X know that they are welcome here? I think that uh, instead of being offended and calling to cancel him, I think that being more loving is the better option. I think it's a little bit counterproductive to wag your finger and say, how dare you instead think of how we should be more loving and kind and all of that. How do you respond to this music video? Um, what are your thoughts about this? I would love to find out. Thank you for taking my polls. I do have a point to having the polls up there, so, so thanks for that. And also let me know, have you checked out Lil Nas X Twitter and what was your favorite tweet? I do really like the back and forth that was happening with Caitlyn Bennett. I thought that was funny. What was your favorite tweet or your favorite TikTok about this? Or were you just living under a rock and you had no idea what the hell was going on until I mentioned it?